Good morning, kids. Welcome back to another wonderful Sunday. I'm so glad that you've decided to join me this morning for another amazing lesson and story from God's Holy Word. And it is true. Everything that I teach and uh, talk about uh, to you every single Sunday morning is from God's very own word. And we are going to get ready right now to talk about another exciting story. And we are going to learn that God's plan is best. And we're going to be hanging out in the book of Luke, which is in the New Testament, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. So if you'd like to grab your Bibles, you can join along with me and follow along as I tell and share this story with you. We have a new remember verse, and this remember verse is found in Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, and I'm going to read that to you, okay? And it says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And I don't know about you, but I want to be led by him so that I can spend eternity, which is everlasting, with him. So that's our uh, remember verse for this week. So I have a question for you. Uh, do you. Do you like to go, do you like to go fishing? Well, I like to go fishing. Yeah. Am I very good at it? Uh-uh. But uh, you won't believe how many fish I caught. It, it, uh, amazing. I, I don't ever catch that many fish. Like, way cool. But you know what? This reminds me of a wonderful story in the Bible uh, found, like I said, in the New Testament in Luke. And by now you should have your Bibles with you. And I'm going to talk, talk to you about the, the greatest fishing expedition ever. And I'm not talking about my fishing expedition because, well, you can probably see they're not very real. <laughs> well, you know, I can have fun with you though, right? Is it okay to have fun with you? Well, I want to start this morning by reminding you that Jesus is God and he chose to come to earth as a baby and grow up like you and me. But Jesus never sinned. The Bible says that as Jesus became a man, he was wise and he grew in favor with God and others. He knew that God's plan is best. Now, are you ready to go fishing? You probably are wondering what going fishing has to do with our story today. Well, hold on to your fishing poles and I'll tell you. You got a fishing pole? Are you ready? You ready to cast it out? Okay, let's go. We're going to go through this story. So when Jesus was 30 years old, he began his ministry. Crowds of people followed Jesus, and they were amazed by the things that Jesus said as he told them that God's plan is best. They were amazed at the miracles that, that uh, miracles Jesus did show to them um, and that God's plan was best in each one of these miracles that took place over the years of his ministry. Jesus traveled to Galilee and he began to teach people beside the Sea of Galilee. And the crowd got so big. Well, it got so big, it's just like they were all pressing in. So let's see what the Bible says as this crowd got bigger and bigger. So you can follow along with me. And I'm going to be reading verses 1b through 3. And this is what it says. God, great crowd. Bleh, let me try again. Great crowds pressed in on Jesus to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and they were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats... Jesus asked Simon Peter, its owner, to push it out into the water. Hmm. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. Wow, that's really awesome. I think that's really awesome. That was a really great idea. Jesus would be able to face the crowd of the people on land from the boat and talk to them and teach them. 
And he wouldn't have to worry about people behind him because everybody was in front of him. Gave him lots of extra space, right? That's cool. Peter didn't fish with a fishing pole and a hook. Many fishermen at that time used heavy nets that they lowered into the water. Fish would swim into the net and then the fishermen would pull up the net and take out the fish. And the net full of fish could get really, really, really heavy at times. It was really hard work because you know what? They would pull those nets out and they'd dump them out, but some of those fish were in between all of the holes in that. Hmm. Can you imagine trying to get those fish out of there um, and so that they were out of there safely so that they would be able to sell them? Well, in verse 4, it tells us that when Jesus was finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Simon Peter replied, Ma Master, well, we worked all last night and we we didn't catch a thing but if you say so well i'll let the nets down again well these fishermen caught fish for a living was jesus a fisherman did jesus even know what he was talking about hmm. well jesus wasn't a fisherman he was a teacher and he was a carpenter and people didn't really know him for his fishing skills. Even so, Peter agreed, and he took his boat into the deep water, cast his net, and guess what happened? You're not even going to believe this. Are you ready? It was probably the best catch of fish that Peter and his fishermen friends had ever seen or would ever see again. Wow, let's find out what happened in verses 8 and 9, okay? It says, when Simon Peter realized what happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and he said, Oh, Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. For Peter was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others that were with him. Did you hear that? They knew that it was a miracle. They knew that Jesus had performed the miracle, and he was no ordinary man. You're right. He was no ordinary man because he is God, Peter didn't feel worthy of this amazing miracle. Well, Jesus didn't go away. Instead, Jesus asked Peter to follow him. Follow him. That would be the correct word. Follow him. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, it's amazing. God, the God of all creation, invited Peter, a fisherman, to be part of his plan. Wow. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Wait, what? Did I? I said that right. Jesus said that you're going to fish for people. Fish for people? How do you, how do you do that? Well, when Jesus said fish for people... He meant that Peter would tell others about Jesus. God was inviting Simon Peter to use his talents for a bigger purpose, to be part of God's big plan, to bring people in relationship with, into relationship with him. Peter was an ordinary guy who might not have thought that he was in any way special, but Jesus did. Jesus loved him and had a special part for Jesus, for Peter to play in the big God story. Let's see how Peter responded in verse 11. As soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Did you hear that? They left their business of being fishermen to follow Jesus. Just like that. Peter didn't feel worthy of God's loving choice to use him in God's big plan. 
just like Peter, we might not feel worthy of God to choose to use us in his big plan. But God's plan is best. And he loves us so very much. And he invites us to follow him. And I know that that's the desire of my heart is to follow him and to tell others about him so that you can follow him as well. God invites us in his plans and he invites us, like I just said, to tell others about him so that they can be in a relationship with God as well. How do we enter into a relationship with God, you might be asking? Well, when we trust that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose again, we become one of God's children who will live forever with him. It's such great news, and we can share that with others. What are some other ways that we can share the good news of Jesus? Well, we can show love to others. We can take care of those who are hurt or sick or in need. We can pray for people who are having difficult times and so much more. And you know what? Today, in this whole year that we have been in with COVID and everything, what a perfect opportunity we have had and that God has given to us to really show the love of Christ and to be a hand extended to those who may have needs. And so those are some of the ways that we can share the love of Christ with others. And we can show them his love by the way that we live our lives each and every day. We are a testament to who Christ is in us. You know, when people see how we treat them and one another, um, they'll see uh, that we are Jesus' disciples. They'll see his love through our lives. Just like I said, it's all part of following God's plans. And God's plan is best. Jesus calls us to more amazing lives than we could ever dream for ourselves. Because of God's great love and mercy, we have been invited into his plans, the best plans. And to me, that's amazing that the God of the universe invites us to be a part of him and his plans. That is the way coolest thing ever. And you know what? It may be fun going fishing, but you know what? I want to fish for Jesus and I want to share the love of Jesus with you and with your friends and with anybody that God gives me an opportunity to do. So why don't you join me today by accepting the Lord as your personal Savior, just as Peter did, and that you too can become a fisher of people, boys, girls, uh, men, women, your teachers, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, so many that we can reach out to, right? Well, let's pray and let's thank God for what he's done for us and showing us his plans are best and thank him for letting us join in on this week's Big God Story. So why don't you bow your heads and your hearts with me? Father God, I thank you and I praise you for this day and for this opportunity, Lord. And Father, Peter had no idea what was about to take place when Jesus told him to push out that boat and to put the nets out once again. The doubt, you could you could tell that he was doubting uh, what Jesus asked him to do because they had been out all night, Lord. And Lord, you just asked him to do it. He did it. And not only did they have the record uh, take of fish, but those fish were so heavy, it almost sunk their boat. And Lord God, I just ask that you would give us such incredible faith, Lord God. Father, even though Peter doubted, he followed through. Through, Lord God, and he trusted you for what you asked him to do. And Lord, you were a complete stranger to him because he had never seen you before this day. And Lord God, I ask that you would just reveal yourselves to us and that you would be a stranger no longer, 
But Lord God, that we would ask you to be our Lord and Savior today. And that means that you would also be our very best friend. So Lord God, I thank you for your plans because your plans our best. And Lord, I ask that the kids today and anybody who might be listening may call upon your name to ask you to be Lord and Savior of their lives, Lord God. Their sins will be forgiven and they have a new life in you. And Lord God, I just ask that you would lead uh, these individuals, Lord God, to your word, the Holy Bible, and to a great Bible-believing church so that they can be discipled and so that they can grow, grow in the same way that Peter became became a disciple of Jesus. I thank you when I praise you for this time and opportunity. I ask your blessing upon the kids and anybody that is listening today, that you would minister to them. You would go before, come alongside, and bring up the rear every step of the way as they follow your plans. Father God, I thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, you all have a wonderful week. I love you. I pray for you. And I hope to see you again next week for God's next big story. Bye now. Mm -hmm.